So welcome to my second video. This video is on spotted sand grouse. So all of these pictures they used in this presentation are taken by Bharat Kapri. I would like to thank him by sharing these photographs. The discussion topics in this video will be its etymology, basic information, and the threat it faces. Even though having a least concern status, this bird faces one serious threat. Move on to etymology, in which we will discuss its scientific and common name. So, as the name suggests, it is spotted, which means with spots. Sand grouse, in which a grouse means a fat and little bird. So, a little bird which lives in sand. So, you can see that it has spots all over its body. Moving on to the scientific name. The scientific name of spotted sand grouse is Terocles senegalus. It was first described by Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish zoologist, in 1771. So, Terocles means Teron plus Kles. Teron means wing and Kles means splendid. Therefore, a bird with a splendid wing. Senegalus means discovered in Senegal. So, Senegal is a country in Western Africa. But a doubt comes in our mind that does every bird with a beautiful wing come under Terocles? Now, let me explain it. So, currently there are 16 species of sand grouse around the world. Out of these 16, 14 come under Terocles and 2 come under Sarhaptus. Before 1815, the sand species discovered were put under the tetrao genus. But in 1815, Dutch zoologist Koenrad Temenik changed this 14 species genus to Terocles. For the viewers' information, Tibetan and Palas sand grouse belong to Sarhaptus. Now let's sum it all up. So the scientific name is Terocles senegalus, which means a bird with splendid wings living in Senegal. The common name is spotted sand grouse. But how are they related? So the answer to this riddle is the scientific name is named after the male. As you can clearly see, it has splendid wings. Now moving on that common name. So the common name is named after the female as it has spots all over the body. Moving on to the basic information. In this, we will cover identification pointers, distribution, habits and habit. So let's discuss the ID pointers of the female. As the name suggests, the bird will obviously have spots. So it has a spotted crown, a body with black spots. But moving on, we have a buffy breast and an orange throat patch. So technically, all of these four pointers indicate to a spotted syndrome's female. On to the male. So the male will have an ashy band on its hind neck or the back of its neck. Or you can rather say its nape. Now, it also will have buffy spots on wing coverts and scapulas. For people not knowing wing coverts and scapulas, they are just parts of a wing which are clearly visible. Now, moving on, it also has black tail pins. It also has bright orange throat patch. Now, its distribution and range. So, if you see this map, you can clearly see that it's resident in West and North Africa as well as the Middle East. So this Middle East also contains Iran. So this Iran population might come to India and Pakistan in winter as well as passage. Sources show that they come as soon as August, which means as soon as the monsoon season ends. India serves as a roosting site for spotted sand grouse from August to March. Now they have a tendency to migrate as soon as their breeding season starts, which is June to July and migrate once again as soon as the hatchlings grow up. Juveniles are being recorded in Kutch, which indicates that they migrate as soon as the hatchling grow up. Now, there are high possibilities that spotted sand grouse might start breeding in Kutch as well if they find suitable and safe breeding grounds. But for that, we need to conserve them. Moving on to habits. So, they are gregarious, which means they tend to stay in flocks. They come to drink water twice in a day. They come two hours after dawn and before dusk. They are very punctual. They tend to land a very few meters away from the water hole and walk towards it. On spotting a predator or a threat, they squat on the ground and camouflage them. 
Now these birds follow a certain protocol when visiting a water hole. When visiting them, the flock sends one scout bird to recon the surroundings of the water hole in case of threats. The potential threat if is spotted, the scout bird will go away and come again after a certain interval of time. If there is no threat, it will either drink water itself, then call the rest of the flock or it will go back to call the rest of the flock. While walking towards the water hole, if they will find any threat or in the form of noise, they will form a fan-shaped tail in order to appear large, as you can see in these photographs. Now moving on to threats. The major threat is hunting. The hunting is not in the form of poaching, but in the form of commercial. So hunting is a popular sport in Middle East, Africa and Pakistan. Hunting trips are conducted and booked online. They are also considered delicacies in India as well as Pakistan in case it is being hunted in cuts too. This is the main reason they are not visiting India and after 19 years they came back. We need to spread awareness about this and stop it. Thank you for listening to me and please share your valuable feedback in the comment section. If anyone wants to have similar information on a specific bird, kindly let me know. I will try my best to provide it. Again, thank you and if you like it, please don't forget to share it and subscribe to my channel, The Deviant Wave.